Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chris, the Arid Lord on YouTube. You are watching a tutorial video on how to make YouTube videos with the Elgato Game Capture device, and more specifically how I make my YouTube videos in a clear yet sophisticated manner in which I am able to upload my videos at a quick pace, quicker than most people on YouTube I'd assume, and also make sure my quality is as high as it can possibly be. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this in-depth tutorial. We have lots of things to get to, and let's get started. So over here, uh, you will see an explosion waiting to happen, which is my conglomerate of wires procuriously placed in the left-hand portion of my desk. These wires hold many different functions such as powering my 360, my computer, my printer, and etc, etc. Now, specifically in this mess of wires, I basically hold most of my important things including the Elgato Game Capture device. You'll see, specifically when I hold the Elgato in my hand on my chair, you'll see that there are two different ends. One for the component end and one for the HDMI end. For the Xbox 360 you can use either end, however I tend to go with the component end seeing as how I've used the green, red, and blue uh, HDMI output devices for the 360 for quite some time. So I tend to find it to be the easiest method of uh, HD capture, so I tend to use the component method. Now as an output source, I use my HDMI Rocketfish cable which plugs into the HDMI out port on the Elgato Game Capture device as you can see here. And then finally the last cable that we'll be plugging into the Elgato will be a USB plug which plugs into the out port of the Elgato into a USB slot that is free on your computer. I would suggest for people using devices such as Windows 7 and Windows 8 and if they have a computer that holds USB 3 ports to consider not plugging your device into a USB 3 port for fear of the device not working. I actually am, uh, am unable to get the Elgato working with a USB 3 port and for that reason I am forced to plug the device into an odd shaped USB 2 port where the device and the wire itself is actually stretched pretty thin because of the short length of the cable. So do keep that in mind when you are setting up your device. Okay, so once your device is actually hooked up and operational, you will see a little mini preview screen in the left hand corner of the Elgato software. Uh, the Elgato software can be purchased at elgato.com in a special section. They frequently update the software so there are certain changes that come with each version such as being able to actually f do live commentary within the software itself without having to use a program such as XSplit or the ability to live stream straight from Twitch TV on the program itself. The Elgato software is a very self-sufficient programming device and it allows you to use many softwares that you would think you would need an external device for but in fact you can use it just from the software itself. So there are some different features you can do on the software as I just said. There's live commentary and I tend to do a balance between the audio in the gameplay with the audio in my commentary. As you'll see there are these two little knobs and basically the more you turn the knob to the right, the louder the volume is going to be for that selected device. So for my microphone, if I change the volume too loud, my voice is going to be a bit more louder than the game. But if I change the game audio too loud, it's going to be more louder than the mic itself. I tend to set the, set the game audio to halfway, so that way it gives people a good ear for the audio so that it's not too loud. Again, because you're using direct capture, the audio is going to be loud enough, so you're not going to want to overemphasize the volume on your video. Additionally, you don't want your, there to be an echo within your mic, so I usually set the microphone to about three clicks, and uh, usually I also do a, a type of balancing within the mic. Uh, you'll see these two attenuation and threshold features right here which basically lowers the game volume slightly not enough for it to be noticeable but just slightly enough for your voice to slightly trump the game audio that way you're not competing with the game audio and vice versa
Okay, so when you're ready to start recording with your Elgato game capture device, just hit the big red button in the bottom right hand corner. As soon as you hit this button, it will now flash yellow. This means that you are recording and you will be able to see if you are indeed recording because you will see green bars moving from left to right across your screen basically saying that there is audio coming from the game audio or the live commentary or whatever device you have active at that moment as I showed you previously and um, again you can select uh, what device you want specifically to run through the editing options you can choose it to be PlayStation 3, 360, the Wii U even your HDMI computer you can do a whole I've done a whole bunch of different things with the Elgato so it can actually stream many different devices including old devices such as the PlayStation 2 which is how I've been able to play a lot of my classic games such as the Grand Theft Auto series on my PlayStation 2 so it can do some pretty incredible things in getting you gameplay from a variety of systems so once you stop recording um, a number of things will happen. Basically, when you stop recording, the video will begin to process automatically. And you can do one of two things. You can go into the editing feature of the Elgato software if you would prefer to edit it through there. Or you can choose to find the selected file in your video's library. By default, the Elgato will exit any file that you take into the video library folder, but it will additionally make a duplicate in this little library folder called EGC where all of the full all of your videos that you make are saved here um, if you choose to delete them you can because I've noticed my computer gets clogged up with uh, lots of videos and it starts to lose memory quickly because of the duplicate videos that I'm making and since the Elgato does create video files that are about a gigabyte a piece for like average 15 to 20 minute video clips um, it can get kind of cumbersome for your computer, so just keep that in mind. But in terms of moving files around and selecting them for YouTube uploads, this is where you'll find them. Now something I probably should have mentioned early on in this tutorial is how specifically I set myself up when I record a game. Because as I told you, I set my mic so that the audio from my game does not interfere with the audio from the microphone. So I do use a gaming chair that used to have audio coming out of it. I have taken that feature out of the chair uh, since getting my Elgato. But now the, the audio from my TV comes directly from the TV. I usually set the TV to a threshold of 15 to 20 volume hertz and usually that works for me to hear it but also for it to not interfere with the microphone. Usually what I'll do is I'll have the microphone on a little stand, a pull out drawer that comes out from my table and I will set my chair up and with my chair set up the drawer will be right next to me and the microphone will be right next to my face so that way I don't have to uh, cumbersomely lean over and talk into a microphone or wear an awkward looking headset that might be annoying for me to use when I'm trying to enjoy my game. In terms of friends in co-op, generally what I'll do is in the Xbox 360's game options, I tend to set my preferences to have the voice come out of the TV because when you do that, the Elgato Game Capture actually picks it up. And I know there are some people that have their preferences as to how this is done, but my overall preference is to set the voice volume slightly higher than the game volume, maybe voice volume 9 or 10, uh, the game volume 6 or 7. And generally, this comes out fairly well if you have the same combination that I have where your voice lowers the game volume a little bit and at the same time the game audio isn't too loud. So having all of these features built upon each other makes for a perfect combination of audio and clarity throughout the course of your video. Now a point that I previously brought up was that any video taken with the Elgato Game Capture is not only large in file size but also is exported as an mp4 video format which YouTube has had the tendency especially with the videos I've made with my camera in the past it does not seem to like those types of video files so one way I work around this is when I'm making like a giant playthrough of say 16 parts or 20 parts of a playthrough and I need to upload them quickly in succession one thing I'll do 
is export them into a video editor such as Sony Vegas and I would suggest Sony Vegas because it is probably the best utility for rendering and editing videos I've been using it for years and I think it's a great program however you know I'm not sure how other programs works but in terms of Sony Vegas there's a tool you can actually use what you do is you export or import all of your video files separate them in the video track then you basically click on each video twice and hit the R key on your keyboard and this is basically for rendering and once you hit the R key a little green square will appear and then you can actually type in text um, as to what that render region will be now once you've done all your render regions you can actually go up to the tools tab hit scripting and go to batch rendering and in the batch rendering tab you can select what these files are going to be called um, and how they're going to be rendered so you can actually either render the entire video as one whole thing or you can do render regions and if you render the regions it will only render those specific regions that you highlighted with those green check marks and thus your computer will automatically render all of those videos and put them in an external folder so you'll have a triplet of that video and the video will the video's quality will remain the same but at the same time you will actually have the ability to upload these videos with less upload time and less hassle especially if you choose the WMV video format now I'm sure you noticed when I was selecting my specific settings that I had something called the uh, a preset called the best settings my best settings basically has the video rendered the same way the video is made except the only change is it's in the WMV format instead of the MP4 format for whatever reason YouTube likes this um, style of video a lot more than the MP4 and changing it to this while keeping the 1280 by 720 uh, 720p video quality won't destroy your video quality but at the same time will give you the ability to upload videos very quickly okay so the final step in this video making process this is simply uploaded to YouTube you can select the file that you took raw from the Elgato or you can select the file that you rendered in Sony Vegas or any other video editing program and then from there basically you know the, the whole YouTube process applies checking on the video and all the stuff that should be obvious and then from there the process is just repetition when I do multiple playthroughs of a game I'm constantly hitting the start and stop button on my software if I want the files to be that small you could theoretically run your Elgato for five hours straight as long as you have the memory in your computer to support it that's how the Elgato works it always goes off of the memory in your computer as long as you have enough gigabytes of computer storage space your Elgato will always work and um, if you don't want to take a five hour clip you can always take the five hours worth of footage if you're really gonna play for that long and then split the video up into separate parts either in the editor that the Elgato offers or in some other video editor that you own externally so I hope this guide has been helpful for you I have shown you all of the insides and outs of my gaming setup how I sit how I position myself the volume the threshold and anything else that I've added in there. Uh, it took a while to make this video, but I hope it was worth it to all of my friends who are making their transition to direct capture, such as Darkside Phil and my friend Peter, and um, also some of my fans who might be interested in this, in this as well, and anyone else who has come across this video and has found it useful. So I thank you very much for watching it, and um, I hope to see you for more videos in the future. See you later, guys. Thank you.